What's up, y'all? I'm Rahat, and today I'm going to show you how to build a small ERC721 NFT contract using Hardhat and deploying it onto the Polygon mainnet and verify your contract. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome to GM, as they say. It's early, but you know. With the terminal open, I'm going to create a new directory called Metadata NFT. I'm going to CD into that directory and initialize things with NPM. Moving forward, I'm going to install all my dependencies with Yarn, but you can continue using NPM. I'm going to install .env in order to hide some environment variables, hardhat, which is going to actually set up our environment, hardhat etherscan to help us verify our contract, and opens up the contracts, which is going to allow us to use the ERC721 standard. I'm going to leave all these dependencies in the description of the video, so you can copy and paste that to install. Last thing I'm going to do right now is go ahead and run npx hardhat init. And what that is going to do is essentially help us create our environment. We're going to create a basic sample project, say yes to like all of the default values. It's going to install the remaining dependencies that we need. And once that's through and done, we can go ahead and open this inside of our IDE or editor of choice. I use VS Code, but you can use whatever you want. Now, what I'm going to do is delete the um, sample contracts that this comes with. So that's the greeter as well as the sample script. Get rid of those. And I'm going to create a new Solidity file, and I'm just going to name it metadata nft.sol. It's important to make sure that you keep this folder structure intact because Hardhat needs it specifically set up this way in order to help you deploy and test all of your smart contracts. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy some code into this file. I've got our license modifier set up at the top, just declaring this as an MIT license. Next, I'm going to go ahead and say that for my Solidity version, I'm going to make sure we're using above 0.8. And I'm going to import two contracts from Open Zeppelin. First is the ERC721, specifically the ERC721 URI storage extension, which is going to help us with setting the URI for our tokens. And then counters, which is going to help us with setting up the token IDs for each of our tokens. Let's start writing out our contract. So we're going to name our contract metadata NFT, and we're going to say that it is ERC721 URI storage. What this means is that we're inheriting from the ERC721 URI storage contract we imported from Open Zeppelin. Next up, we want to start utilizing counters. So the way we do this is we're going to say that we're using counters for counters.counter. And now we're going to use counters.counter .counter as a private variable called token ID. We're going to learn a little bit more about how we can utilize this in just a little bit. But one more thing that we want to do before moving on is actually writing out our constructor. So our constructor, we're not going to take in any arguments right off the bat, but the ERC721 standard does take in a couple arguments. Both of these arguments are going to be strings, and we can pass this just by calling ERC721 and passing it these two strings. The first is gonna be metadata NFT, which is just gonna be the name of our token. And the second string is going to be the symbol, which we're gonna call MDNFT. So the last thing we wanna do is actually write out our minting function. So we're gonna declare a function and we're just gonna call it mint. And this mint function is going to take in one argument. And that argument is gonna be a string, which we're gonna save in memory. It's gonna be called the token URI. This is just going to be some link to a JSON file that we're going to be uploading to IPFS. This is going to be a public function because we want anyone to be able to mint, and it's going to return an unsigned integer. An unsigned integer is going to be our token ID for this specific token that we mint. Now let's go ahead and use that token ID that we declared on line 10, and what we're going to do is call token IDs.increment, which is one of the methods that we get from our counters. That's what we declared up here on line 10, and now we're using this private increment function that's given to us from counters.counter. .counter. Now, what we're going to do is set that current token ID to a new item ID, which is just gonna be another unsigned integer. And the way we can get our current token ID is by simply calling token IDs.current. Next, we want to actually mint, so we're going to use the safemint function, which takes in two arguments, an address and a token ID. So we're going to give it the message.sender, 
Message.sender is just going to give us the current address of whoever is interacting with this contract when they mint. And we're going to set the token ID to be that new item ID that we just declared on line 17. Once we've gone ahead and minted this, one more thing we want to do is set the token URI. So we're going to call the set token URI function, and that's going to take a token ID, which is going to be our new item ID, and it's going to take our token URI that we declared earlier. Now the last thing we need for this function is just to make sure we're returning an unsigned integer. So let's go ahead and return that new item ID that we declared earlier. So a couple things before we move forward. I did update a couple of values in here. This metadata NFT v2 and MD NFT2. The reason I updated both of these strings is because I do have a version of this contract already deployed on the Polygon mainnet. Now we're going to go ahead and deploy this version onto the Polygon mainnet as well, but just to differentiate the two, I decided to go ahead and update these values. Now to actually get this up, what we need to do is a couple of things inside of our hardhat config.js. I'm going to go ahead and remove a bunch of these values. And I've also gone ahead and added .env up top, as well as this etherscan package. And that's going to help us with actually getting this contract verified once we have it up on mainnet. We're going to need to add a couple more things inside of this module.exports. First is networks. The network we're going to be deploying on is the Matic mainnet. So we want to make sure we grab a URL for our uh, Matic mainnet RPC, as well as making sure we supply our private key from our wallet, which we'll do in a second. One other key I'm going to add after this networks key is the etherscan key. Now, although it says etherscan, this is fully compatible with polygon scan, so we're going to make sure we get a polygon scan API key. Next, I'm going to add a .env file, which is going to house all of our environment variables. I'm going to copy and paste a couple of values that I already have and drop them in here which is our private key, a mainnet RPC, and polygon scan API key. Let's go ahead and get it, grab these values. So the first of these values is an RPC endpoint. The RPC endpoint is essentially what allows us to communicate with the blockchain and say, hey, we've got this smart contract that we want to deploy onto the blockchain. Alchemy is an RPC provider. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I've got a few apps here already, but I'll create a new one. You can use any RPC provider you want. I'm using Alchemy just for the sake of this demo. I'm going to name it just demo demo and we're going to make this environment production and we're going to switch the chain to polygon and we're just going to keep it on polygon mainnet. I'm going to hit create app and we're going to hit view key and what we want is this HTTP value over here. So go ahead and copy that and head back over to our VS code and paste it in here. Normally you do not want to share this but for the sake of this demo I'm sharing it. Next is the private key. Now to grab our private key, we need to go back into our MetaMask. We're going to make sure that whatever wallet you're using has some Modmatic inside of it. Now we're going to hit these three dots and hit account details and export private key. You type in your MetaMask password and on the next page, you'll get your private key. You copy that value, head back to VS Code and drop that into the private key. Now that we've got all of our values set up, let's go ahead and create a script to actually deploy this thing. We're going to create a new file inside of the scripts folder, we'll call it deploy.js. Everything here is just going to be JavaScript. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some code that I've already had pre-written and walk you through it. We've got this main function, which is going to handle our deployment. It's an asynchronous function because it's going to be doing a few things that we have to wait for. First, we're going to try to use the HRE object, which is given to us by hardhat. And that allows us to get access to this get contract factory function, which simply takes in one argument, which is a string that is the name of our contract. Once we have that, we can now deploy the contract by creating this variable and calling the NFT contract factory dot deploy function. We have to await the deployment of this. And once that is completed, we can console log out the address that this was deployed to. Once it's successful, we just exit out with process.exit0. If there's an error, we're going to log out the error and exit with process.exit1. Last thing is just making sure we call the main function. And now for the moment of truth, let's yeet this onto the blockchain. We're going to run this npx hardhat run script slash deploy.js, and we're going to specify the network to be Matic. That is going to compile 12 Solidity files, and that is because we are importing a whole bunch of files from Open Zeppelin. And we're going to take the address that we get where it's been deployed to, head over to Polygon Scan and search that up. 
And once you search, you can see, yep, 48 seconds ago, at least of this recording, I created this contract. Now, this is awesome. I can see that the transaction went through, everything was great, successful, but there's not much else I can do. So if I click this contract, I've got this verify and publish. So let's go ahead and take care of that so we can actually go ahead and interact with our contract on Polygon Scan. Now I'm already signed in here uh, for my profile on Rahat Codes, but if you're not signed in, just make sure you sign in, sign up, or whatever you need to do. Then you're gonna click on this little API keys uh, button over here on this menu. Once you click into there, you can go ahead and actually generate your own API key. Once you have that, you head back over to VS Code and drop that into the .env file. Now Hardhide gives us a nice little script that allows us to verify things pretty easily. All you have to do is run npx hardhat verify and just make sure that we're copying and pasting that contract address where this contract was deployed to. Finally, we just have to make sure that the network is set to Matic as usual. Once that's done and verified, we'll be able to actually interact with the contract directly from Polygon Scan and call any of the functionality that exists on it. So as you can see here, we've got the green check mark. We can click read contract and write contract and look at the different functions associated to this contract. We've got a lot more than we wrote because we're inheriting a lot from the Open Zeppelin contracts. Here's our mint function. Let's go ahead and mint something. Now to actually go ahead and mint, we need to do a couple things. First off, we need to connect our wallet. So we hit connect to Web3, hit MetaMask, and mine was quick because I've done this before, but you might have to actually sign something on your MetaMask. Now, the other thing is we need a token URI. So we need to take a JSON file and upload it somewhere. So I'm gonna use web3.storage, and I've already done this, but I've got a JSON file that's been uploaded here. Once it's uploaded, you'll see here that I've got a few things here on this JSON. I've got a name, description, an image, an animation URL, which is gonna be pretty cool in a little bit, some attributes uh, that I've added for my NFT. Now, I'm not gonna go too far into these, but I will leave a link in the description for you to look into the OpenSea standards for how the metadata should be set up. But once you do have that set up, you can go ahead and copy this URL and come back over here to the mint function, drop that in, hit write, and you'll see some gas that you'll have to pay, but because we're on the Polygon network, it's very small. Hit confirm, and you can view your transaction, and once it's successful, go ahead and view that on OpenSea. So what does that look like on OpenSea? I've got this here little video of me introducing myself and letting everyone know that I've joined Polygon in the form of rap. Awesome. So now you've got a good base on how to start your own ERC721 project, deploy it on Polygon, and get your contract verified all in the Polygon mainnet. If you want to test any of this stuff out on the Mumbai testnet, all you need to do is replace Matic with Mumbai when specifying the network. If you want to learn more about Solidity development and developing on top of Polygon, definitely check out Polygon Academy. Link for that is in the description. Hope to see you there and continuing your journey into building on Web3. Peace.